When starting a project, we're never quite sure how it will end. A familiar situation, isn't it? Everything might look good on paper, but as we all know, the devil is in the details. And I must say, it's rarely wrong. When it comes to NASA's Galileo mission, this adage hits the mark. In the entire history of astronautics, it's difficult to find a more problematic unmanned expedition than this one. It's strange that in the end, the probe still continued to work and sent megabytes of valuable information to Earth. So just what did it meet on its way? And what kind of breakdowns periodically jeopardized the successful completion of the mission? <sighs> During a difficult and risky maneuver, the probe went through an epic event, the catastrophic collision of the Shoemaker-Levy 9 comet with the largest planet in the solar system, Jupiter. And this fact compensated for all the problems that arose, fully justifying the organization of an expensive expedition. Do you think it's possible for a person to realize the complexity of space travel to this huge ball of gas with its incredible gravity and deadly radiation belt? On Earth, most likely not. Such a voyage is associated with a myriad of surprises that cannot be predicted in advance. For understanding, let's mention the problem that Galileo encountered almost immediately after it left the Earth's surface. The device's huge umbrella antenna broke. This meant that the information that the whole world was waiting for with bated breath would not be available. In other words, the intellectual forces and huge financial resources invested in the mission were completely leveled. Experts say that one of the reasons for the misfortunes that constantly accompanied Galileo was outdated equipment. Because the design of the probe began back in 1977, and it was only launched 11 years later. There were dozens of incidents, but at the same time, nothing prevented mankind from considering the Galileo mission one of the greatest in the history of astronautics. However, let's not fall into speculation. It's better to immediately turn to the facts. So, what are the milestones of the Galileo space probe's long journey? Rendezvous with asteroids. Almost at the very beginning of the journey, being in the asteroid belt, Galileo became closely acquainted with two representatives of this cosmic population. Their names are Ida and Gaspra. These are the first asteroids seen by scientists with the eyes of Earth probe cameras, especially from such a close distance. Naturally, unique photographs are of great scientific value. As for Ida, Galileo discovered a moon near it, which was in itself a sensation. This small celestial body, the moon, which is basically just a clunky-looking boulder, was named Dactyl. Ida itself is no more than 32 kilometers in diameter, and for comparison, the circumference of its escort reaches just one and a half kilometers. By the way, this is the first moon discovered around an asteroid, and it was Galileo that found it. Thanks to the information received, astrophysicists have learned more about chondrite meteorites that periodically fall to the Earth's surface. Their sources are now considered to be S-class asteroids, to which Ida belongs. And what about the second asteroid? Galileo flew at a relatively short distance from Gaspra, 1,600 kilometers, and during this time it transmitted 57 images. In addition, the orbital and physical characteristics of the celestial body were studied in detail. It turns out that Gaspar is comparable in size to Deimos, the moon of Mars. The temperature on the surface of the asteroid reaches minus 92 degrees Celsius, and the age of the object is about 500 million years. Gaspra is completely covered with craters, and there are about 30 of them. Catastrophic meeting. The next event accompanying the mission of the Galileo spacecraft was the live footage of a spectacular disaster. We would never have seen it in all its glory if not for the probe, because the event took place on the opposite hemisphere of Jupiter from Earth. What disaster do I mean? 
we are talking about the collision of fragments of the comet Shoemaker-Levy 9. Galileo recorded the collision of 21 fragments into the atmosphere of Jupiter at a speed of 64 kilometers per second. The fragments fell for seven days while the probe methodically filmed the collisions and sent photographs to Earth. At that moment, the device was at a distance of 1.6 astronomical units from Jupiter, about 240 million kilometers. It's amazing, but the energy of the explosions, traditionally calculated in TNT equivalent, exceeded the entire nuclear potential of the Earth by 750 times, and the gas clouds at the places where the fragments fell rose to a height of up to 3,000 kilometers. Is that really even possible? A fresh look at the Galilean moons. The Galileo spacecraft studied the four largest moons of Jupiter in detail. Now we can say for sure that Ganymede has a magnetic field, and therefore a liquid hot core just like the Earth. In addition, the probe flew close enough to the celestial body to photograph its surface. Based on the data studied, astronomers have suggested that there may be an ocean under the crust of Ganymede. Before that, the Jupiter moon was once photographed by Voyager 2, but such detailed information was obtained for the very first time by Galileo. The next moon study by Galileo was Callisto. The probe flew quite close to the celestial body and photographed its heavily cratered surface. The device found that the moon has no magnetic field, and many craters indicate the ancient age of Callisto. Was there anything strange among the observations? Yes, a dark rock of unknown origin was found in the lowlands, possibly due to the tectonic activity of the object. In addition, on Callisto, Galileo discovered a subsurface ocean, the depth of which exceeds 100 kilometers. At the same time, it's believed that it's absolutely dead, unlike the reservoir of Europa, but we're not sure yet. The probe circled Callisto eight times and once passed at a record distance of 138 kilometers from the surface of the celestial body. What about Io, strewn with hundreds of volcanoes? Galileo also visited it, flying 102 kilometers from the moon. The priority target of the study was volcanic plumes, and the probe successfully completed the task. This unusual moon is distinguished by variegated colors due to the highest volcanic activity. Among other things, the Galileo apparatus found out that if an astronaut had miraculously landed on the surface of Io, it would have received a deadly dose of radiation of 3,600 rads. This is a lethal dose at which a person dies painfully from multiple internal bleeding. Also, the probe managed to fly through volcanic ejecta, rising up to 500 kilometers, and make the corresponding measurements, which significantly supplemented our knowledge of the Galileo moons. The device found extensive traces of the powerful eruption of Patera Pilana, which happened in 1997. Thus, mankind has formed an idea of the monstrous scale of the volcanic activity of this strange world. In addition to these moons, Galileo flew 200 kilometers from Europa and confirmed the presence of an under-ice ocean in which, as scientists suggest, life develops. Photographs of Europa's surface were additionally studied by people who've worked in the Arctic for years and stated that the researchers are definitely dealing with an ice crust. In addition, it's possible that ocean water in some places even flows over ice hills. The surface of Europa is dotted with lines, freckles, chaos, furrows, and other landscape clutter, indicating endogenous activity of a celestial body. Galileo circled Europa 12 times and was subsequently destroyed due to fears that the device would eventually fall on the unique moon and infect it with terrestrial bacteria. Are you surprised? Be patient, we'll tell you about this event a little later. In addition to the traditional Galilean objects, the probe also visited Amalthea. It's an inner moon of Jupiter and the third farthest from the gas giant. If you don't pay attention to the size, then Amalthea is more like an asteroid because it's a huge boulder of irregular shape densely dotted with craters. 
From Amalthea's surface, Jupiter doesn't look like a planet. It's a monstrous disk that dominates the celestial body. Unfortunately, the most detailed photo of Amalthea looks like a blurry shadow, although it gives a distant idea of what Galileo was dealing with. But does the value of the mission lie only in the study of the Galilean moons? Discoveries on Jupiter You'll be surprised, but even the death of Galileo benefited science. When it was decided to destroy the probe, presenting it with a ticket to the deadly atmosphere of Jupiter, the mission organizers frankly cried. They had to endure too much to keep the spacecraft operational. Nevertheless, the inevitable happened, and data from the probe was transmitted until the very last second. But not only the probe, which had been orbiting Jupiter for quite a long time, made a significant contribution to astronomical science. In December 1995, the descent probe, the passenger of the main apparatus, plunged into the inhospitable atmosphere of Jupiter. Of course, no one expected a long stay, but a lot of information that scientists received was worth such sacrifices. The device worked for about an hour, and during this time descended to a depth of 130 kilometers. Astronomers were in for a few surprises. For example, Jupiter's hurricanes blew at much higher speeds than expected, and the temperature of the atmosphere also turned out to be higher. At a depth of 130 kilometers, the probe recorded 150 degrees Celsius, although when entering the gas layers, instruments showed minus 80 degrees. Surprisingly, the supposed water vapor cloud layer was also missing. It had always been believed that the atmosphere of Jupiter was full of super lightning, but during the flight of the descent probe, there were not so many of them. However, electric discharges were still recorded by the instruments and were a thousand times more powerful than those on Earth. The Galileo probe also recorded the Great Red Spot, a global hurricane observed only through telescopes three centuries before, although the voyagers clarified the picture a little. After all, it was previously believed that this was not a storm but a solid structure. So, despite all the difficulties, problems, and obstacles, the Galileo spacecraft became a real pioneer, fearlessly paving the way for other missions because it saw and learned a lot for the very first time. Those that followed it will be warned and prepared, and this is worth a lot. The dangerous and fascinating journey was filled with incredible events, but the one that recorded them died heroically in the stuffy atmosphere of Jupiter, so we'll never hear his call signs again. Would you like to continue? Then click on the bell to be notified of new videos. Share your thoughts in the comments. Is it worth sending new missions to Jupiter? Will they unlock the mysteries of the origin of the solar system? In the meantime, we'll think about the topics for new videos. See you on the channel. Take a look at the screenshots that are now on the screen. These are statistics from YouTube. What does this mean? Notice, now 57% of viewers of this channel are watching without a subscription. Therefore, in order not to miss Hubble videos, you just need to click on the red button, which looks like this. It's below this video. The law of the universe is simple. Remember that. After all, each of your subscriptions is very important to me. The more viewers, the more often they watch and like, the faster a new mega-interesting video will come out.